Okay, good. So in this one, we will discuss about various branches of physics, their application and what kind of problems that are solved using them. So the word physics comes from a Greek word which means nature. And indeed, physics is all about understanding various phenomena that happens in our nature. It has played the most important role in the technological development of our modern human civilization. From electricity to mobile phones, from cars to rockets, all are applications of these very branches of physics. So you don't have to remember all these things. The aim of this video is to motivate you and introduce you to these branches. Good. So our first branch is classical mechanics. So this branch deals with macro objects. Macro means large object, large scale object such as a football, a building or even stars and planets. For example, if we have a football on the ground like this, if I take a football here and then if I kick it with some velocity V, then classical mechanics can help me to predict where this ball will fall on the ground or how much high will it go during its motion and not just the football it even for starts for example if we take sun like this and then suppose the planet Mars is going around sun in such a orbit like this so now if I know the position of Mars today and its velocity in its orbit then I can predict where this planet Mars will be say after one year or even 10,000 years. So this kind of power of predictions of such large scale object is achieved through classical mechanics. This branch was developed through the works of Galileo, Kepler and Newton while its modern version was given by Lagrange and Hamilton. Now let's move to the second branch. which is quantum mechanics. So this is one of the most important branches in physics and it has been used in various movies and TV series because of its interesting predictions. So this branch helps us to study micro objects or small objects. We can study the atomic particles such as electron, protons, neutrons, as well as subatomic particles such as quarks. So, if we take an example of hydrogen atom, which is nothing but a proton at a center, and then an electron going around it, like this. So naturally, we will think that this electron must be going around this proton in, a, in some orbit with a specific radius. But quantum mechanics tells us that this is not correct. This electron is actually present in the form of a cloud, which is called as an electron cloud. So this means that this electron is not present at this particular point, but it is present in the form of a cloud, which is everywhere around it. And what is the best thing that we can do is to find the probability of finding this electron at some particular position. So if we make an observation then we will say that to find an electron at this point the probability is 0.05 or at this point it is 0.5 like this. So yes quantum mechanics is a weird subject but the results of the quantum mechanics have been verified through various experiments. An even amazing prediction that it makes is that some quantities such as energy, momentum, it, quantum mechanics says that these are quantized quantities. So if we are doing an experiment to find the energy of this electron, then we will think that this energy can be anything like 1, 2, 3, 4 or even the in-between numbers such as 1.5, 1, 1.5, 1, 3, it can be anything. But no, quantum mechanics puts restrictions 
on these value of energies we find that the energy of this electron can only take values such as third minus 13.6 then minus 3.4 minus 1.5 electron volts so these predictions are not easy to understand but but this branch has one of the most beautiful structure in physics it was developed through the works of planck einstein bohr heisenberg schrodinger born pauli dirac and many others so for now let's move on to the next branch which is thermodynamics so this branch studies the properties of different states of matter such as solid liquid gases where we try to find some thermodynamic properties such as its pressure volume temperature energy heat capacity etc so for example if we take a container like this and inside it if we fill an oxygen gas so we can study its thermodynamic properties such as pressure volume temperature energy per molecule etc but now if you want to change that what we do is to attach a piston on the top like this and then we apply some force on this piston and so this will compress this oxygen gas into into half of its volume like this So this change in volume which is a thermodynamic property will cause changes in other thermodynamic properties such as pressure temperature etc and now using the laws of thermodynamics we can predict this new thermodynamic properties of this compressed oxygen so the cooking gas that we use or the petrol and diesel in our cars and bikes they all are obtained through the study of various thermodynamic processes this branch was developed through the efforts of improving heat engines back in the days and it was developed through the efforts of hundreds of scientists good now let's see the next branch which is a level up of thermodynamics it is called statistical mechanics So this is a mathematical approach to study similar thermodynamic systems but instead of knowing the properties of whole oxygen gas such as this pressure volume temperature what we can do we can study only the one molecule of oxygen so if we know that oxygen molecule is nothing but a diatomic molecule which looks like this this is one oxygen atom attached to another oxygen atom through a double bond so just by studying this diatomic molecule we can find out all of the thermodynamic properties using mathematical methods of statistical mechanics again this branch was developed by many scientists but the one name that remains on top is Ludwig Boltzmann good good so now let's move on to the next branch which is electrodynamics So if we have charges which are not moving, for example, if I take this positive charge, it is not moving, then it will produce an electric field around it. Like this. 
but when this charge starts moving along with the electric field they also produce magnetic field this electric and magnetic fields the motion of charges in this field and also the behavior of photons all these problems can be studied with the help of electrodynamics and the best thing is that this whole branch can be studied through just four equations which are known as maxwell's equation these equations tells us about how these charges will produce electric or magnetic field through their motion and the electronic devices that we use the electronic components circuits the whole branch of electronics are the result of electrodynamics this branch was developed through the efforts of ampere volta faraday maxwell and many other now the next branch is optics and acoustics So as the name suggests optics is a study of light while the acoustics is a study of sound in optics we can study how light will behave when it passes through some medium such as glass or water or diamond for example if we take a convex lens which looks like this and we allow some light to pass through it so we can find that this light will be converged or focused to a single point like this this point is known as focal point but now if we take a different type of lens a concave lens that looks like this and then we allow some light to pass through it then we can find that this light is converged out about its focal point like this and so using this exact principles we can we can construct combinations of these lenses to create devices that helps us to look at far away objects that device is nothing but telescope or it can also help us to look at very small objects such as bacteria and that device will be microscope so in this way we can take help from optics to study behavior of light while in acoustics we will study the behavior of sound say in the in the small room or large room or how we can reduce the noise in a movie theater by changing the shape of the walls or by adding some material on the wall and maybe in future acoustics can also help us to lift some objects in the air using the sound waves good now we move to the next branch which is electronics So this branch takes ideas from all the other branches and create useful devices. We all know the applications of electronics that includes laptop, mobile phones, TV and even supercomputers. For our course we will study simple objects of electronics such as a resistor or a capacitor then an inductor and transistor. and these days people are even trying to combine quantum mechanics with electronics to create something known as a quantum computer and after this there are some advanced branches known as quantum field theory then special and general relativity then nuclear and particle physics
and after that we have cosmology cosmology and astrophysics so these are quite advanced branches which maybe will take like two years to study and current research in physics is going on in this very four branches so be it an experiment at LHC which is large hadron collider or LIGO indigo gravitational wave observatories all these areas of research fall under these categories so this was an introduction to various branches in physics and the way the research is going on in this subject we will have detailed discussions on all these topics in future but for now let's move on to the next one